Hello friends, before we get into today's episode, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to leave a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and let's try and hit a target of 150 likes on today's episode. So Gary Oak is one of the most loved favorite characters from the Pokemon anime series. He's probably one of the best rivals that we've had in the Pokemon universe. And he's just generally a character we want to always see a little bit more from. But where does that take us in today's episode? So we're going to take Gary Oak, this legend right here. We're going to create a theme team and we're going to try and get to a Master Ball tier in the Victory Station Online Ranked Battle Ladders. So first things first. First, we need to try and get to legendary status of Gary Oak, but we need to discover what Pokemon we got available to us. So we head over to our trusty source at Cerebi, have a look at the Pokemon that Gary's used in the anime series, and cross-reference those with the Galar region Pokedex and the Isle of Armor to see what we've got available to us to use within this challenge. So we've got nine Pokemon all together, and then we ask ourselves, what would Gary Oak do? Well, you'd probably do this. We create a team with G-Max Blastoise, throw on Umbreon, one of Gary's favorite Pokemon, on, add in Arcanine, one of the classics there, throw on a choice band. We add in Scissor for a little bit of priority there and give us a bit more options and a steel type. Alakazam gives us the speed that we need and then round the team off with Kingdra that gives us a little bit more a dynamic feel to the team outside of just running the Blastoise. And honestly, I feel that it's a team that Gary Oak himself would be super proud of. So that was a brief overview of the team and as always the rental code for this team will be available at the end of the episode if any of you want to try it out for yourselves. So we get started and jump on to the ladder with a fresh account, lock into our Gary Oak theme team and we begin our journey to the Master Ball tier on the ranked ladder. So our first opponent straight away comes in with a super tricky team consisting of a strategy based around Anger Point, Ability Taurus and Frost Breath Froslas. The premise of the strategy strategy lies within attacking their own Taurus uh, with Frostlass to activate its Anger Point ability with the guaranteed critical hit move Frost Breath to give it a plus six attack boost. And from there, you're probably potentially going to see a crazy and unstoppable uh, winning sweep. So knowing this strategy, it's super important that I try to prevent my opponent from setting this up. If they do, it will be 100% lead to a really bad start for us in this episode. Does it feel like our best option in this matchup? and for stopping this strategy is to lead with our Alakazam and our Kingdra. So getting into this first match, we see my opponent lead off with that infamous lead that we were just talking about, the Frostlass and the Taurus. And I instantly go for a turn one Choice Scarf, Rain Dance with Alakazam, activating Kingdra's Swift Swim ability and boosting its speed, allowing us to move before both opposing Pokemon and Max Geysering into the Taurus before they are able to set up. So we end up actually pulling this off and being so close to taking down the Taurus, even with with the rain boosting and max move, uh, it surprisingly hangs on with the tiniest amount of HP. Now the funny thing here is by us attacking the Taurus before the Frostlass can use its Frost Breath, um, we actually proc a speed boost and bury the Taurus is holding, meaning it now attacks before my opponent can activate their Anger Point ability. So we end up only taking a non-boosted max strike for our troubles and then we see our opponent actually knock out their own Taurus with the Frost Breath critical hit. And then obviously we proceed to see them Rage Quit and DC. Adding salt. So with an already interesting start to this adventure, we swiftly move on to our next opponent. This one's pretty straightforward for the team to deal with, and it takes us to our current record, which is two wins and zero losses. Our third opponent definitely was a lot trickier than the last, and threw a huge unexpected curveball at me during this one. Uh, they lead with Grimmsnarl and Chinchino, uh, and we go with Umbrian and Scissor. So I tried to set up the sword stance for an early sweep, but Chinchino uh, pulls out an unexpected attract oh yeah and for the next two turns and more, Scissor is not able to attack because of the affection it now apparently has for this very little white mouse. After a number of turns trying to play around the attract tech, we finally managed to get rid of the Cinchino. And from that point, the team starts to show its tenacity by eking out a very close victory. So uh, after so many turns early on where we weren't able to attack, current record 3-0. So far so good, we are making great progress, but 
but we soon run into a little bit of trouble. Our next opponent using primarily the Venusaur and Max Dynamax Hydreigon ends up taking us to the game time. And we eventually lose this one due to the number of Pokemon left on the field. Me with Umbreon and my opponent with the Hydreigon and the Venusaur. Now, who's a little salty? With no timer, we would have definitely won that one and there's no way... Uh, we're talking. There's no way. Five minutes later. No way they should. We should have lost that one. Three days later. There's no way they're taking down the Umbrian. So trying to recover from our first loss, we move swiftly on to our next opponent, running a team of Galarian Ponyta. I didn't quite know what to expect, but either way, we get back to winning ways super quick and pick up a win, taking our current record to four wins and one. So things going super well so far. Thinking that we had recovered from that time and lost two games earlier, we quickly run into another tricky opponent who throws a G-Max Urshifu team at us, which uh, unexpectedly we couldn't handle. Quickly overwhelms us, which means at this early stage, we were handed a second loss in our run, taking our record to four wins and two losses. Feeling already a little less confident we can actually achieve our Master Ball tier goal, we cautiously move on to our next opponent and start what turns out to be a totally unexpected six game win streak. We quickly move from Pokeball rank all the way up to Great Ball tier. Among these matches we encounter another salty player DCing on us after we showcase all these team skills and again I'm quickly reminded how strong this team can be in another match against a very solid Sand standard Sun team where we lead Kingdra and Alakazam again and make such quick work of one of the strongest team archetype builds in the current VGC format. With the Choice Scarf on Alakazam we always outspeed Max Speed Chlorophyll Venusaur in the Sun meaning we are always able to get up our rain before they can attack allowing Kingdra to always make quick work and easy work of these Sun based squads. So now that takes us to our current record where we stand 10 wins and 2 losses after that six game win streak now with the team progressing pretty well we go into our next match and whether or not we started to become a little bit overconfident at this point or a little bit complacent we end up getting completely caught off guard with this next one against a super strong match and build which hands us an unfortunate third loss in this run so our six game win streak comes to a quick end taking our current record to 10 wins and three losses that trainer was lucky that i got distracted by all the girls cheering for but the team shows once again how strong it can be by bouncing back against our next five opponents, taking us on another incredible win streak. This time beating teams with Dynamax, Alchemy, Volcarona, a Mimikyu build, a solid rain core, and a Psy Spam squad. Taking our record to 15 wins and three losses and moving us up to the upper echelons of the Great Ball tier. Now feeling like we're finally making some progress again and uh, we are uh, another opponent pops up and just catches us totally off guard playing a Sun team which hands us our fourth loss. So now taking our record to 15 wins and four losses. But unfortunately the losses don't stop there as we dive down on a four game losing streak. Kind of dismissing the fact that we've had two good win streaks already. Our next opponent um, and the bunch of them are definitely getting tougher as we start to kind of climb the ladder a little bit as we start to tilt as well. Losing to a nasty Porygon Z team, an Arcanine Sylvian build, and finally getting shut down by a really solid Snorlax and Belly Drum Azumarill squad. We just don't have answers for some things in this format and we're kind of finding that out as we're going along. We were falling down the ladder quicker than the sails of toilet paper at the start of lockdown, honestly. Taking a minute to reevaluate our current situation and trying to refocus on our end goal, we go into our next match versus a bravery team. It's definitely not the easiest of matchups, but we need to try and clear clinch a win if we can. So we lead off with Arcanine and Alakazam in this one. We see our opponent lead off with the Gyarados and their own Arcanine um, and we actually go all guns blazing with our own Arcanine here going for the wild charge straight into the Gyarados even though we are minus one from the Intimidate from that opposing Arcanine. We've got the choice band, we can outspeed the Gyarados, we guarantee the knockout if we can get this attack into it. 
After losing Alakazam, it does give us the opportunity to bring in our Blastoise and make sure that we can utilize that G-Max ability for one of the first times in this run. We are pressured from the Excadrill coming onto the field, so we need to make sure we are switching out our Arcanine here, but we have the perfect opportunity right now to max our Blastoise and go for a G-Max Cannonade and start stacking up that residual damage every turn. And as you can see, we make quick work of the Arcanine and the Excadrill with our Blastoise. And that gives us a crucial win at a really important point in this run, taking our win record to 16 wins with now seven losses. Now feeling a little more confident again, we jump straight into the next one and it's another Sun Squad. So this time we go into it with a little bit of a different strategy from the last Sun team that we faced. We go with our trusty Alakazam. Kingdra lead here, we get the rain up and although we don't see my opponent leading out with their sun mod we get enough momentum early on in the game with kingdra and pick up some crucial knockouts that it does end in a victory for us taking our current record to 17 wins and seven losses now moving us up our current tier list as well before getting into the next one against a colossal team now dragapult colossal very threatening pair and something you have to respect a lot Again, in this one, we lead off with our Alakazam and Kingdra. And because of the Choice Scarf on our Alakazam, we had speed everything on the field and are able to get our Rain Dance up, activating that Swift Swim on the Kingdra and making quick work of that G-Max Colossal. From that point, it's pretty easy sailing for us. We can deal with pretty much everything else on my opponent's team. They don't have their Gigantamax Pokemon anymore to make use of. And we pick up another victory, which takes us up to the next stage in our Great Ball tier. So as ever we do, we move on to our next opponent. We're going to grind it out and keep going until we get through this. So for this next match... We continue to pick up another win against our next opponent with another Sun team where Kingdra Alakazam do their thing once again. And after we play an interesting Alolan Raichu and Pinchurchin squad where Arcanine shines single-handedly taking down all four of my opponent's mons, we do take another victory and move our record up to 20 wins and 7 losses. Which finally puts us in that Ultra Ball tier and we are in reach of that Master Ball tier with a few more wins, we can actually do this. So we move on swiftly to our next opponent in this quest. Our next opponent though brings a very awkward Meowstic Togekiss kind of base team. And unfortunately, this one is where we get handed another one of our losses, taking our record to 20 wins and eight losses and setting us a little bit further back in our quest to get to that Master Ball tier. But as always, the team does us a solid and bounces back, putting in some great work to pull out a win versus a super strong sand team which is another one of the big standard teams in this vgc format we follow this one up with another victory over our next opponent who is running a galissapod team thankfully in this one gmax blastoise really shone through and helped us edge out the match in the end taking our rank up to an even closer step to that master ball rank and at this point we are at least two wins away from reaching that goal so with the finish line literally in a few wins away, we are now in touching distance. We once again lock in, go into our next match, but we end up hitting a disastrous roadblock. We go on another four game losing streak and literally I couldn't feel at the time like this could get any worse. A first loss coming from a horrible status condition from a melodic Cinderace team which led to an inevitable defeat. Then we get beat down pretty hard by an alternative Dragapult and G-Max Colossal build. Uh, face another Porygon Z team which hands it to us. And one more melodic team with a token Zoroark. That proves a little too much for us to be able to handle. This now takes our current record to 22 wins and 12 losses and leaves us just barely hanging in the Ultra Ball tier. And at this point, I really am starting to think our chances of achieving this Master Ball rank are fading away very quickly. As the higher we climb, the stronger the teams than the opponents seem to naturally be. Have we already plateaued? Things aren't looking great and my confidence at this point is really starting to wane. 
but we have to keep going. So with that in mind, we dust ourselves down and move on to our next opponent. So we're playing a G-Max Lapras team where we lead off with our Scissor and Alakazam. We're trying a different tact from previous G-Max Lapras teams that we've played. Interestingly enough, they don't lead with the G-Max Lapras. They go with the Dynamax Bravery here. So we have to kind of stall out these Bravery turns. We have to be careful not to proc the Define ability and utilize our Pokemon to the best that we can. We do manage to eke it down to a point where we've got Rillaboom and Lapras on my opponent's side of the field and we are left with Umbrian and things are not looking great. But lo and behold, Umbrian is an incredible Pokemon and one of Gary's favorite Pokemon for very good reason and it actually ekes out the win for us here with its just sheer determination and tanky ability being able to take down these two giant pokemon in the vgc format two on one so we actually pick up a victory and that is such a relief because at a point where we felt like nothing was going right we needed something to go right and umbrian pulled through for us we get that win but unfortunately that victory was very short-lived as we run into a, a nasty Drake as old Sun team in our next opponent that totally overwhelms us and takes our ranking back down the ladder to the bottom of the Ultra Ball tier and our current record sitting at 23 wins and 13 losses. Moving on, we managed to get two consecutive wins against a scary Tyranitar team where Scissor puts in a bunch of work against this core with the only threat on my opponent's team to the Scissor really being that Cinderace and we could keep that in check if it did make an appearance with Arcanine and it worked out pretty well. Then a G-Max Blastoise mirror match was in the next one and uh, again, we've got little Umbrian to thank for a win here as it pulls through in a super clutch one-on-one -on -one endgame situation. Uh, with the set up G-Max Blastoise on my opponent's side of the field. Now making a little more progress, we can start to see the finish line in sight again. So our current record now is 25 wins, 13 losses, and we are still in that Ultra Ball tier. With a few more wins, we can get to that Master Ball rank and complete this goal. Our next opponent throws a huge spanner in the works though, and again halts our progress. Taken by surprise by an OP Raichu Pinchurchin team, hand us another loss, taking our record to 25 wins, 14 losses. And now I'm thinking all we're doing at this point is yo-yoing up and down this Ultra Ball tier. Is it ever going to end? So as we edge on to the cliff of tilting again, we call upon the team one last time to make a final push with this goal in sight. I managed to pick up a victory against the next opponent playing another Dragapult G-Max Colossal build. As always, we call upon Alakazam and Kingdra to do the job for us here, and they do it in fine fashion. The trusty Scarf Rain Dance from Alakazam was enough to set Kingdra up and get a turn one knockout on G-Max Colossal, and from there my opponent had very little to do and make short work of. Current record now sitting 26 wins, 14 losses, and now we are only two consecutive wins away from that Master Ball rank. With our next opponent, after so many ups and downs, the doubts start to creep in. We face a Duraludon and Melotic squad. And this one's gonna be a really tough one, but we actually do the unthinkable here, and G-Max Blastoise, once again, with support from our little Umbrian, Pull us through and pick up another huge victory, putting us on a current record of 27 wins and 14 losses. And now we are literally one win away from the Master Ball tier. So hype it up. Can we do it? Now moving on, we are finally paired up with our next opponent playing a sand team with Dracozolt. This is a similar build that we lost to earlier on in our journey. So I know this is going to be not the easiest battle and with one win away from master ball tier we have to try our best to pull out a victory for one more time so my opponent leads with the Dracozolt and Incineroar as we lead off with Arcanine and Blastoise. Now the Intimidate here from our Arcanine is super important into that Dracozolt, but Blastoise on our side of the field is not in a great position at all. I try to consolidate a little bit at this point and pull a double switch, bringing Scissor and Umbreon onto the field to kind of soak up a potential max move from the Draco Zolt. It allows us to cycle and intimidate again and soak up the fake out pressure from the Incineroar. This works out great because we do soak that fake out up pretty nicely and take a, a pretty comfortable max lightning with the minus one Draco Zolt into our Umbreon. Now we've got the ability to switch 
Arcanine back in and get this Dracozolt down to minus two and really slow it down from being able to do the threatening physical damage that we know it's capable of. We switch in Arcanine once again, get the Intimidate onto the Incineroar and to the Dracozolt and we protect our little Umber in here. So after successfully stalling through two turns of my opponent's Dracozolt's max turns, they're actually to the point where they want to switch their Dracozolt off the field and reset these Intimidate drops. So we see the Dynamaxed Dracozolt switch out off the field, which is great news for me going forward in this match. As we switch out our Arcanine anyway to preserve that uh, Intimidate, we switch Scissor back onto the field as Gyarados takes the place of that Dracozolt for my opponent. After a few turns of switching around and trying to stall and get a good board position out, we finally get Blastoise on the field in a position where we can get a Shell Smash off and we do go for it. We boost our attack, special attack and speed by two stages and that sets us up perfectly to go for the Gigantamax next turn. That's exactly what we do. We get the Gigantamax up with the Blastoise and we go for these max moves here. You can see we get rid of the Gyarados, we start the residual damage from the Vortex and we are going to be able to go for the Direct Result the next turn. We do manage to get rid of the Togekiss but we at the same time lose our Blastoise to the Direct Result's Bolt Beak. So things pretty tight at the moment. We do have the residual damage but the G-Max Cannonade water residual damage that we are getting every turn is helping us deal with this Direct Result that otherwise would be a huge issue for us. So Blastoise has done its job and it comes down to an end game where we've got the Dracozolt and Incineroar versus our three Pokemon in Arcanine, Umbreon and Scissor. And as you can see, my opponent in such an awkward position right now, they're going to lose the Dracozolt to the Hail Residual Damage the next turn. They actually forfeit and that means one thing, we have actually done it. We've got that win and can this take us to the Master Rank? So what we need to do is just connect over here and update our ranking. So we are just waiting on the ranking coming in. Ultra Ball to Max! Ultra Master Ball, we get it. So Ultra Ball to Master Ball tier. We've actually done it with this Gary Og theme team. It's taken a lot longer than what I thought it would, but I'm just so chuffed. This is one of the hardest things that I've had to do playing Pokemon. 42 games seems insane. 28 wins, 14 losses, but with a team where we've only got a restricted bunch of Pokemon, and granted, some of them are very strong Pokemon, it is an extremely satisfying result, especially for me, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you guys at home have enjoyed the journey with a Gary Oak theme team. Remember, if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like to show your support for this content and hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, here is the rental code for this team. If any of you would like to try this team out for yourselves and have a go at this Gary Oak theme team challenge. So if you do, make sure to drop me a comment down below and let me know uh, if you tried it and how you got on with it. Try and beat my record of 28 wins and 14 losses. I'm sure you guys will have a good crack at it. And if you do beat it, I'd love to see some pictures of uh, you guys rocking this team on the battle spot ladder. So if you have enjoyed this content as well, make sure to let me know down in the comment section if you'd like to see more of these theme team challenges. And if so, what characters from the Pokemon world you would like to see me tackle these challenges with next? Have a great day, friends. Thank you again for tuning in and uh, take care of yourselves. Be kind to each other. And until the next one, like Gary Oak says, smell you later.